So I'm going to talk to you about .NET MAUI Blazor, and I have 40 minutes to do so. Normally, I do this in one hour, and I already talk a little bit fast, so um, try to keep up, basically. Who am I? Um, I? My name is Gerald. As Javier already mentioned, I am on the .NET MAUI team together with Javier. Um, you can find me on Twitter with that handle right there, and I also do a little thing on YouTube with .NET MAUI videos, so if that's what you're interested in, which is probably the case, else you wouldn't be here, um, go check out that channel and subscribe there as well. So for the agenda today, um, I think it's like quite easy. We have like .NET MAUI Blazor. So the first thing we kind of like need to answer is what is .NET MAUI? Then we can say like, what is Blazor? And then we can talk a little bit about what is .NET MAUI Blazor? How does it work together? And um, what can these two things do? So First, quickly, what is done at Maui? Well, it is the evolution of Xamarin Forms. And Xamarin Forms has been our offering for creating cross-platform apps based on C-sharp.net for iOS, Android, UWP, and also a little bit for Tizen, Linux, WPF, and macOS, uh, but primarily for iOS, Android, and UWP. So um, that was that was before. We are still working on that. We're still maintaining that. But of course, the hot new thing is .NET MAUI, which stands for .NET Multi-Platform App UI. Um, so that is the new thing. And that is now our product for cross-platform apps based on C-Sharp and .NET. That hasn't changed. But now for iOS, Android, Windows, and macOS. So you can see macOS jumped to the, the little big line. Um, we are now supporting Windows and macOS as first-class citizens. So the, the, the mobile platform platforms and the desktop platforms are all together and we're supporting all of that. So you, you will also see that we don't mention UWP, but we now just say Windows because um, you know UWP is deprecated um, and it's now based on WinUI. So we're now just saying we're supporting Windows and whatever that may mean in the future, we're going to support it basically. Um, and the really cool thing, if you're coming from Xamarin Forms, like the outside APIs are like 95%, uh, which is a very scientific number, 95% uh, the same. So the transition from Xamarin Forms to .NET MAUI should be really easy. So if we put a little marketing sauce over that, then we could say .NET MAUI is the most productive way to develop native apps that perform great on any device that runs on Android, iOS, Mac OS, or Windows, and actually ties in as well um, from a single code base. So let's have a quick look at how that works exactly. Um, so, you know, you have these like SDKs that the vendors are putting out like Android, iOS, uh, Apple, and, and of course, Microsoft with Windows. Um, and so you want to run your app on one or more of these platforms, right? So that's also kind of like what you want to do with .NET MAUI. Uh, you know, it probably makes sense to use .NET MAUI whenever you want to run this on two platforms or more, right? If you want to just run it on one platform, then Sure, you could still use .NET MAUI if that's what you prefer, but um, it maybe makes sense to to choose something else. And we have your app code. That is the code where you want to spend your most of your time. That's where you want to be productive. That is your million dollar idea that will make you rich, right? That's going to be your app. Um, so how are we going to get from like our app code and all these SDKs all the way to, to you know, um, what's in between there, basically? What is .NET MAUI? What is .NET MAUI doing for you? You can just learn this so you know what's going on. And then you can forget it because you just need to know what .NET MAUI is. So the first kind of layer is the .NET runtime, which is where your application kind of runs, right? So for um, anything that's not Windows, basically, this still runs on Mono for the people who are, know what that is. Um, but, you know, that and, and on Windows, of course, we have the full .NET runtime, which you can um, then run on, which is implemented uh, natively. Uh, but that doesn't really, really matter that much because on top of that, we have the .NET base class library. And the DBCL, um, as it's also called, is now shared between all of those platforms as of .NET 6. So, you know, you're just programming against that, although you might not even know it. Um, and we will figure out what runtime it needs to run on for which platform. On top of that, we have .NET for Android, .NET for iOS, and WinUI. Um, so .NET for Android, .NET for iOS. Again, if you're familiar with Xamarin, you might know that as Xamarin.iOS, Xamarin.Android. Um, we gave that a little bit of a different name because the Xamarin name is going away. But all the rest, of course, it's upgraded to .NET 6, but all the rest should be uh, very much the same because it already used the namespaces for iOS and Android and, and whatnot. And like I already mentioned, we uh, swapped out UWP for WinUI, and that's the platforms that we're um, building on top of. And th this layer basically, you know, has all the bindings and wrappers um, that the teams are work, <coughs> excuse me, that the teams are working very hard on to create bindings for the native um, APIs on the actual platform. 
to make them available to you on csharpen.net. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, I wish I had some water here. Um, so on top of that, we are building .NET, um, .NET Bow. And that's basically all that you need to know. So you can focus on your app code. You need to know how to work with .NET MAUI. And then boom, you can create your apps that are perfectly cross-platform. So because of the whole history with Xamarin Forms, we already have a very rich library of controls. We have 40 plus controls. We have all kinds of navigation built in. Um, adaptive layouts that will help you make um, your layout um, 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 adaptive uh, based on like if you're running it on mobile or desktop because that's now a first class citizen as well um, a renewed focus on accessibility because if we implement accessibility better we can make it easier for you to implement accessibility um, we will get more accessible apps and basically everybody wins so here's a little overview of all the controls you can see all the basic things and all the not so basic things so we have images entries editors sliders progress bars the whole shebang basically um, so what we also did again if you're kind of coming from the Xamarin forms world this is not really maybe relevant to the whole dot and maui blazer stuff but um, well maybe it is actually so what we did this is Xamarin typical Xamarin form solution with like three projects uh, the top one my app is a shared project where you want to have all your code that's where your app code wants to live because everything you put in there will be shared for your apps right and then we have the my app .android, my app .ios, and those would kind of like be the bootstrapper project for um, iOS and Android, because at the end of the day, we still need binaries that can run on Android and iOS. Um, we still need to produce those. But what we did for Don and Maui is we now have this single project approach. So we just now have this single project, which is multi-targeted. So all your code is in one project, but you still have all the power to write platform-specific code if that's what you want. So you have these platforms, and then under there, you have folders for Android, iOS, Windows, macOS, and Tizen are there as well. We'll see that in a little bit. Um, and everything in that platforms folder is platform specific code, but everything outside of it is now shared, including the resources, which is a big win. So, you know, you have like the resources. Um, if you've been working with mobile apps, um, then you know that you had to resize your images like to a gazillion different resolutions for Android. And then you had to do the same for iOS. Um, you don't need to do that anymore. You just put in one image, preferably an SVG, um, and we will do all the resizing and stuff for you. So your resources are shared as well. Now, the same goes for like your fonts. You have to define those uh, for each platform as well. Um, the images, I already mentioned those. So you can just put them in there. Then how does it know what um, uh, bits to run basically? Well, in the new run menu, you can just specify like, hey, I want to run everything for iOS or Android. All your devices are there in one list. You just like, select the right one and it will start running um, those uh, for, for the platform that you've selected. Um, so what else do we got? We also have essentials. And with essentials, um, well, I should say actually the, the API is kind of like formally known as essentials because we kind of like um, um, changed them to be in different namespaces. And um, sorry, I'm just texting my wife to make some water. <laughs> All right. Excuse me about that. So um, we divided the essentials libraries in kind of like their own namespaces, which make a little bit more sense. Um, so if you would have like, um, I don't know, geolocations, those are now in Microsoft.maui.device.centers or something. So we made the, we put them in like more logical places and namespaces. So, um, you know, the essentials name is probably going away over time as well, but I might refer to them as the essentials API still. Um, but this is basically like all the APIs and all the sensors and um, um, API, uh, APIs that are not necessarily a UI thing um, in .NET MAUI, um, but you can still do all of those because those are still, you know, common across all the platforms. So let me show you a very, very quick demo of like a .NET MAUI application. Uh, so I'm going to switch over to Windows here for now for a little bit. Um, if you want to run .NET MAUI, you want to use Visual Studio Preview right now, which is, I think, 17.3. Uh, preview one dot one something like that um, because data Maui is GA but the tooling for data Maui is still in preview and we want to have the preview bits out of the stable version of Visual Studio um, so the tooling bits need to live in Visual Studio preview um, but you know um, 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 
you still need the tooling for uh, .NET MAUI to, to run, right? So um, that's why that's there's a little bit of a weird situation here. But later this year, everything will be in Visual Studio stable. Whenever you have everything installed, uh, and this looks kind of blown up because I made the font blow up uh, so that you can see it pretty well in the presentation, uh, you will have this .NET MAUI app template right here. And Whenever you go here, we are going to create one and we're going to see that new single project approach and we're going to see what that's all about. Takes a little bit of time, there we are. This is just a file new done in Maui um, template. So let me just quickly run this in the background as well for my Windows machine. Uh, it isn't quite done restoring all the things yet, there we are. And whenever we go here to our solution explorer, you can see um, the thing that I just showed. So we have this platform. So we have more platforms now than when I took the screenshot. So we have all these things. And in here, you can still see all the uh, metadata for all those apps, and you can still write the platform-specific code. But if you look here in the resources, those are now all shared. And we have the fonts, and we have even more things here. We have some good options to generate the app icon, the icon on your, your phone screen and the splash screen really easily for you. So definitely go check that out. Um, and we have all the other things. So the XAML pages, um, that all lives here. Of course, you know, you're free to create other libraries uh, that you link to this and, and divide up your code, whatever you want. But basically, this is all you need to create, what was it, platforms, one, two, three, four, five apps um, from this one project, which is really amazing. So where's my Windows app? Is it coming up yet? Oh, there we are. The machine is a little bit slow for some reason. Uh, so here we have the basic .NET MAUI app. We have a little click me, a little counter, and that's basically all there is to it. Um, so this is this is really quickly an overview of like the single project thing that we've got going on. And um, like I said, the run menu that we have here. So if I close this and I go back to my run menu, then you can see whenever I uh, open that up that you will see the other uh, things as well. So I have the Android emulators that you can connect to. Um, if I connect my machine to a Mac on the network, I can see all the iOS simulators here and just run it on that. Um, so that's all things that you can do with your .NET MAUI application. But we're working towards like the Blazor applications, right? So let's quickly go over a little bit for the people who are not familiar, um, what is then Blazor? And Blazor is basically web development without JavaScript. Um, so, you know, you all know these kind of like cool applications, right? The really rich experience, um, all kinds of menus and data grids and uh, pop-up dialogues. And whenever you go to the same application, the same page on a mobile device, then, uh, you know, it all scales, it's all responsive. Suddenly the menu on the left will become a hamburger menu and everything will just look um, and, and feel the same. But if you think about these types of applications, then typically you would think of Angular and Vue and um, uh, React. And those are all based on JavaScript. Now, I could go on all day making jokes about JavaScript. Um, and you know, if I would joke all day, then uh, a gazillion more JavaScript frameworks would have come out by then. Um, but it, it's not so much about this being JavaScript, but I think it's about uh, if you have to switch languages, um, like while you're uh, while you're creating something, so while you're creating a ASP.NET project, and you suddenly have to switch to oh, what's this thing in JavaScript again? And you have to go out of your IDE, go to your browser, use Bing to search all the JavaScript things. Um, that makes you less less productive. So how cool would it be if you could just reuse all your C# -sharp and .NET knowledge um, and still be able to do all the things of your single page application, uh, your your kind of like web thing that we're talking about here. So then. Blazor was born, basically. And with Blazor, you can use C Sharp, you can use all the tool, the IDE that you know and love, Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, all the things. Um, we have a consistent ecosystem with all the things that I just mentioned and all the plugins. You don't need to do NPM or I don't know what they're even using in JavaScript. You could just use NuGet packages, put that in there. Um, and you know, we just celebrated like, what was it, 20 years, 25 years of .NET framework. So there's a lot of stability, at least a lot of history um, that you can build upon that we have today. So a very, a very solid base, um, which is proven technology. So where does that all fit in? Um, on the left, you have the whole web UI things, uh, the MVC, Razor Pages, single page applications that you can use today with Angular, React, et cetera, et cetera. And on the right, you have kind of like all the ASP.NET services, uh, which don't really have a UI, right? So um, 
all of those things. And it won't be a surprise that Blazor fits in with all the web UI stuff. And it's built on top of ASP.NET. So if you already know ASP.NET, you know a lot about Blazor as well. Um, how does it work? So we have kind of like two flavors. We have Blazor server, where Blazor, the bla actual Blazor thing is running on the server, um, which is, you know, which has Razor components, which is a very important thing. I'll get to that. Um, it has .NET because, you know, we're providing .NET runtime with it as well. That's the, 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 the kind of like the uh, core of how .NET core works. .NET core, you get it? Uh, but what happens is whenever you go there through the browser, um, then um, um, whenever the user clicks in the browser, uh, going through the domain object model, document object model, um, and they click something through a signal R connection, the changes will go back and forth to the server. Um, so, you know, that kind of like gives you an overhead of, of what's going on. It doesn't scale as, as nice as, as it could. Um, but, you know, that's one way to use Blazor server. Um, we also have Blazor WebAssembly, which kind of mimics more how JavaScript works today, which, you know, downloads the whole application. So your whole Blazor application to your browser. It uses WebAssembly, which is not something Microsoft invented, which is a concept that is built into most modern browsers right now, which is a runtime um, that you can compile your application to, and then it knows how to be executed within your browser. Also, it's not nothing like Silverlight, so it doesn't have like the plugin thing that Silverlight has. Um, this is just, it runs really natively inside of your browser. Um, and it's also uh, suitable for other languages. I think there's compilers for C++, Rust, um, all kinds of crazy things. You can compile that to WebAssembly and you can use that from the browser. But in this case, we're talking about C Sharp and .NET. So again, we have those Razor components um, and the .NET Core run Time. So kind of like the uh, downside for this is that you have to download the whole application plus the .NET framework, right? Uh, which is, you know, from .NET 6, I think the, the .NET DLL is like one megabyte. So your uh, little cat GIF is bigger than that, probably, that you look up daily. Um, but still, it's something that you might want to take into account. And now, like, you know... Um, it, it, it requires a little bit of a different mindset, but um, like the UI latency is less, uh, much less with than with Blazor server, right? Because now the user just clicks and it interacts right in the browser and it goes much, much faster. And you can build offline applications with this. Like, like always, if you have choices, um, there's also always pros and cons. So I'm not going to read all of them to you. I think the most important bits are the ones that I just mentioned and kind of like the uh, red axes uh, at the bottom here. So for Blazor server, you will always have an internet connection because there's a server part to it. And it has that little higher UI latency because you're going back and forth for each UI change that you are doing. Uh, for Blazor WebAssembly, the initial download is a little bit bigger because you're downloading the whole .NET Core thing. Um, it might be slower depending on the actual client that you're running on, um, but it can execute offline whenever you, you know, you downloaded all the bits and it can work as an offline application. So um, there is that basically. Now, we have Blazor Server, we have Blazor WebAssembly, and um, I think then it all comes together with .NET MAUI and Blazor um, in the hybrid scenario. So we'll talk a little bit more on that. Let me just quickly give you a file new um, Blazor application demo. Um, I, I'll show you why I'll do that in a little bit. Um, so back here on Windows, I'm going to do a file new project, and this time I'm going to look for Blazor. And you can immediately choose like Blazor Server, Blazor WebAssembly. In this case, it doesn't really matter what you choose. There's like subtle differences. Um, and you can relatively easily switch between one or the other. Uh, whenever we're going to create this, we can choose .NET 6. We can automatically add some authentication, configure for HTTPS. Let's do that because we're not animals, right? We use HTTPS and do some things with Docker. So. We can do all that. And whenever we create, we get, again, a new Blazor application. And this just runs in the browser, right? This is just a plain old Blazor application. Um, I think Blazor is now three years old or something. Um, there are production apps with this, so that's really cool. But if we also inspect here, like, again, what's in the template, we can see we have this www root, right, with the static HTML files, or CSS in this case. Uh, we have the pages, which has all the Razor syntax. And we have this index razor, and we can mix HTML and razor syntax and, and kind of like these helpers all together. So that's really cool. It reminds me a little bit of the PHP days, which was like the early days for me. Whenever you started programming, you would do PHP and mix all the things. Um, but what I wanted to point out is, again, those razor components. So here we have this survey prompt, for instance, um, which is a razor component, basically. Now, 
here in the shared, we can see this uh, survey prompt, right? So the name of the component that you specify here for this tag is just the file name of this razor file. So survey prompt dot razor. Um, and inside of that, it's just more HTML and we can see here C sharp. We have this add code block in here. Um, and this makes for reusable razor components, which is really cool. Why that is so important, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but so in this case, it's inside of the project, but you could take this survey prompt, you could put it in its separate project and you could link it to this Blazor application. And you could take that separate project and put it in a NuGet if that's what you want and distribute it to all the people that you want if you've created something cool. So. That's kind of like that thing. Um, and to make it even more reusable, there's a lot of things that you can do. And kind of like this is, is one of the uh, most basic scenarios where you have the parameter, um, you have this title. Uh, this is just a C sharp property, right? So we have this title and by adding this attribute parameter to it, it's settable from the outside. So what you can see here is we can set this title to this string, right? And then whenever we run this thing, um, a um, br browser will come up and we will see that this title is actually there in something that um, is a, a little prompt thing. So let's wait for that to come up. Again, my machine is not really fast for some reason. So here the browser is coming up and here you see this is this this gray box is the survey thing, right? So here we can see that title that we just set. Um, and this is just your Blazor application, right? This is just a file new um, Blazor application. And here we have a counter. For some reason, file new templates always need to have a counter. So we can do click me and you can see that that responds instantly. And here we have a little thing that mimics uh, fetching of data from a JSON file and deserialize that and show that in here. Um, so there's all kinds of things. And a really cool thing is if we look at like like that counter thing, um, there is no JavaScript here, right? So this is all in C Sharp and .NET. We can just say, hey, this HTML here with a little counter, we have this current count. You can see with this little add signs that we're referring to C Sharp code and variables, right? So that updates automatically, a lot of cool stuff going on here. Um, another thing that I would quickly want to point out is here in this program CS, um, you know, we have this web application dot create builder. So this is a concept that is very, you know, very common in ASP.NET, ASP.NET Core, maybe other um, .NET projects in the .NET ecosystem right now. Um, but this is like a, a very common scenario now. Okay, so that is what Blazor is. Then we have kind of like the last part, right? What is .NET MAUI plus Blazor? So that's kind of like the best of both worlds, right? We have Blazor, we have all these devices and things, and let's see what, um, what that can do. So with .NET MAUI Blazor, you can build cross-platform native apps that run on Windows, Mac OS, iOS, and Android, which is not coincidentally the same, the exact same platforms that we've seen that .NET MAUI can run on, right? Um, you can reuse your existing Razor class library. So that's why I kept telling you about those Razor components. Those are Razor class libraries. You do not have to change anything. If you have an existing Blazor uh, application, you can just take those components that you already have and you can use them inside of your .NET MAUI Blazor application. So that is so cool. Also third-party libraries that you might have, uh, that you might've bought, they don't need to change anything. You can just take those and put those inside of your .NET MAUI Blazor application. And you have full platform device access. So you can have access to all the sensors, all the APIs on the actual device. I'll get to that in a minute. So what exactly is it? Blazor Hybrid is an extension of Blazor. It's a third option, as we've just seen already, to go with Blazor Server, Blazor WebAssembly, and now we have Blazor Hybrid. It's built on top of .NET 6 and .NET MAUI, um, and it's implemented through a Blazor WebView control to host and render the Blazor Web UI. Now, the Blazor Web View, so it's, it's just another element in your UI, right? So you can take that element and you can put it somewhere, make it part of your UI, but just a little part, or you can create that whole hybrid application and make that Blazor Web View your full view and build your whole app as a Blazor app. So, you know, the choices are yours and uh, the possibilities are endless, basically. And what's really cool is that the Blazor Web View is not only implemented for .NET MAUI, it's also implemented for WinForms. Yes, you can use WinForms again. Um, it's also implemented for WPF. So if you have like legacy applications that run on uh, WinForms or WPF, you can now, you know, you have to upgrade it to .NET 6, of course, uh, but you can then use the Blazor Web View and you can kind of like modernize your legacy application by swapping out some, uh, some things for Blazor uh, components and, you know, 
start transitioning to a newer application and maybe a Blazor application ultimately. So this opens up a lot of cool scenarios. Now, how does that work? Um, I kind of skipped over this with the Blazor template. Um, uh, we have this uh, Blazor web view. So this is in .NET MAUI. We see it here in XAML, but you can totally do this in C Sharp as well. Um, and you can see it, it defines a lot of things. It has a host page, an HTML page, where it's going to load that Blazor application. Um, and we're going to have to specify the root component, which is basically where our Blazor application is going to be loaded in. And with that component type, um, we're saying like, hey, this uh, you're going to load like our main uh, component type. This will become clear whenever I get to the demo. Um, and we're going to point to the main.razor, which is a Blazor concept. And from there, it will start bootstrapping our Blazor application. And you can basically, you know, uh, do everything from Blazor if that's what you want. Now, before we go look at what it is exactly, a little bit of MythBuster. So Blazor Hybrid runs 100% natively in one process. So it's not like we're spinning up a little web process in the background or a web server, um, and we're you know hosting our Blazor application that way. No, we're already creating a .NET application. It already runs on .NET, so we don't need to host it anywhere. Um, we can just make use of the .NET runtime that we already have in our .NET Maui application. So no hosting, no nothing. Um, we can just run it directly on there. Same performance, same everything. No HTTP request, unless, of course, you know, you're know you going out to a server to retrieve data. Sure, then there's HTTP requests. But if you want to create an offline application, you totally can. Um, you don't need to any HTTP requests anywhere. And there's no browser sandbox, which is a big thing as well. Um, so if you load that Blazor application inside of your browser, then luckily, I would say, we have the browser sandbox, right? That application cannot just go out and format your hard drive. But with your .NET Maui application, you can totally format your hard drive. Um, you can totally do that. You don't, uh, you're not bound to that browser sandbox because you can access all of those um, device um, um, APIs, all of those um, 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 sensors all those uh, things. So the only thing kind of like you, uh, HTML about Blazor, um, Blazor Hybrid is the UI, um, because that is the only thing that's kind of like web rendered. Uh, all those, the other stuff is just running natively as a .NET application. So let's see how that works. Now, if we do again, file new project, uh, we also have this dotted Maui Blazor app. So if we create one for that, this is going to be Maui app eight, which is going to be terrific. Um, and if we look at like, oh, this goes fast for some reason. If we go look at this one, this is kind of interesting. Uh, if we've seen the other kind of like templates here, we have now um, something that looks like the Maui template because we have the platforms with all the platforms under here and the metadata for Android. Um, and, and we have the, the, the resources and the app icon and that kind of stuff. But we also have the pages with Razor pages. Um, and we also have the www root. So they basically took like two of the templates for Blazor for .NET Maui, smashed it together, and now they said, hey, we have this .NET Maui Blazor application. And you can see actually the exact same stuff that's in the Blazor template, because here we already have this index.razor. We see this survey template, uh-huh, there it is. And we have this shared survey template right here. But imagine that you took that survey uh, prompt, um, I'm saying survey template, but I mean survey prompt. If you took that, put it into a separate project or maybe even a nugget, I could just pull down that nugget, put it in this project and boom, I can reuse it in my .NET Maui, Apple, .NET Maui Blazor application as well. And if we run this, let me just stick to Windows right now. I could also do it on Android, but it takes a little bit of more time to boot up the Android emulator and get it running there. Um, you will see that this is actually, you know, the Blazor template basically um, running. Um, uh, it looks like kind of like the same as in the browser, but now it's running inside of a native Windows application and um, we can use all the power from that. So that's kind of cool. And what we also get, because we're using HTML and Bootstrap and all the CSS things, again, a lot of proven technology here. Um, it is responsive out of the box. If I make this, um, you know, a little bit smaller, we again get that responsiveness and suddenly we have this hamburger menu. And if I make it bigger again, then boom, we would have the menu bar again. So this is all stuff that we kind of like get for free, which is still a little bit harder to do whenever you're creating a native .NET Maui application. Um, so, you know, if this is something that you like, then definitely use it like this. Um, Someone's at the front door. 
So there is that. And um, what I wanted to also mention is like Maui program, um, which we have here. And this is kind of like, you know, it looks the same for um, uh, kind of like you see the same concept that we saw for a regular Blazor template, right? So we have this create builder. Of course, it's not the exact same things that you're going to see here, um, but you can use uh, that exact same .NET generic host builder, uh, the same concept that you uh, will be familiar from with like other .NET project ecosystems. So that should look familiar and will give you a flying start basically with uh, this whole project thing right here. Now, um, the other kind of thing, like, you know, we have to make that bridge between this XAML. So this is still dot and Maui. This is that Blazor web view that I uh, just showed you in the slides. And uh, this is kind of like comes back to the approach of, do you want to create that full hybrid app with one page where you have a full, um, Blazor application, or do you want to maybe um, you know mix and match a little bit and make it one element in your uh, in your UI? So if we run this again, you will see um, that you know this this whole page is that Blazor application, and we're just loading it like that, running it like that. Uh, but what if we want to change that and maybe load each of the pages that we have here in? Um, the menu right here, maybe we want to load the counter and the fetch data in separate tabs that um, are the Windows tabs, right? So what you could then do is go here and not make this a content page, but we could make this a tabbed page. And then we can create content pages here. So content page, and inside of a page, we can have that laser web view, and we could copy this one and create another one. Um, and another one, and we could give this a title. So let's make this, um, I don't know, uh, home. And the other one was um, title uh, counter, right? And this one was something with data. There we have that. But now we're still referring to like that main, right? And that main is this main.razor, uh, which is a router element, which is a Blazor thing. Um, and this wires up like all the pages that we have. But we could also point our Blazor web view directly to pages. So what I could also say is here, create a new XML namespace with pages. And I could here say pages because this all lives in my pages, right? So we have this counter um, and this, this has the, it doesn't really show here, but this lives under the pages namespace. So that's why I have this little thing here. And now I can say not local.main, but I can say pages counter, or I can say pages. What else do we have? Um, Oh, the, the other, this one is the counter. Okay. So this is index and this one is what's it called? Fetch, fetch data. It's not called fetch data. Okay. Then I don't know what this one is called. Uh, doesn't really matter. I'm going to not do this one for now. So you could, if you know how to look up the name, you could totally do that. Um, and now if I would run this, then we should see a tabbed page, which is a native Windows control, or it's going to be translated um, to a Windows control um, through the power of .NET MAUI. And we will load in each tab a Blazor web view with that exact page. Um, so I need to change this main page.xaml here to a tabbed page as well, so that this is in line. And page, there we are. And if we run it again, so this way um, you can really mix and match like the native platform functionality with the Blazor functionality. Um, and you can create apps any way you like, basically leveraging the power of these both platforms. Now, this is only this, this one thing here. You can see home counter, see? So it loads all these things in here. Uh, we don't have that menu anymore. We can just create our own menu and still use all of this Blazor power right here. Um, now you could use this also for like, you know, popping the camera, um, getting the location of the user of the device. Um, that those are all the um, um, APIs that you can still use from .NET Maui, but now through Blazor because it's all just C Sharp and .NET, right? All right. Sorry, buddy. Yeah, sure. Yes. Yeah, oh yeah, 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 sure. I'm wrapping up. Thank you. Um, so there's another totally awesome demo that I could show you right now, which is the .NET podcast. If you just go to .NET fully written out, so D-O-T-N-E-T, uh, .NET podcast.com, uh, you will have this very cool showcase, uh, which is still being maintained. You can host it yourself if you want. You can go to GitHub, inspect all the code. Uh, it has the server side for this thing. And basically it's a, a, an, a an application that loads all kinds of podcasts, which are .NET related. Um, and you can listen together, you can subscribe, 
prototype. Now it's all not all implemented because you know it's meant as a showcase. Um, but what is implemented is a uh, a .NET MAUI application, a mobile application, in like two versions, a native .NET MAUI application. So with full native controls, all the bits, it compiles to however it should look at feel on iOS, but also a .NET MAUI um, Blazor, so a Blazor hybrid application. So they built the same application, but now also with Blazor. So you can see the differences in the approach, how to do what and where. Um, but what is also really cool for the .NET MAUI Blazor application that shares components with the .NET um, podcast, Com because that website that you can see there is also a Blazor application. So, you know, there's all kinds of sharing and things going on here, which is really interesting if you are, you know, looking for how to create your application, um, di considering different strategies, all those kinds of things. So I know, I know you're right now behind your computer. You're like, the day has just started, but you're already hyped up with like dotted value, dotted value, Blazor. I want to do all the things, but calm down. Calm down, okay? There is a couple of other things. I only have a few minutes left. So before I let you explore on your own, right after watching Maui Fest, of course, I always get these questions now, like when should I use or should I use dot and Maui Blazor at all? When should I use or should I use dot and Maui Blazor? Or when should I just use Blazor? And kind of like the answer to all of this is the answer to everything in development. Uh, it depends. Right? It depends. So there is all these scenarios that you can do right now. If you are a web developer and you want to go into cross-platform and you want to have that icon in the app stores, then this is a way for you to do it. Or the other way around. Maybe you're very familiar with Xamarin Forms with .NET MAUI and you want to, um, you know, look into your web development skills as well and you want to use that UI. It will make it very easy to create pixel perfect uh, UIs with the .NET MAUI Blazor stuff. You can do that as well. And I think a more realistic scenario is the one that I mentioned. You have that legacy application that you want to modernize. Um, you can do that kind of like from the inside out um, or, you know, just because you have too much time and you like to tinker with new technology just because you can go check this out. Now, again, we have so many choices. So um, people also then ask me like, hey, when should I choose what? If you want to have the biggest reach, go for the web. All devices have kind of like a browser. So if you're going to create a Blazor application, you can run it on basically any device in the world. Um, if you want to like kind of go hybrid in the same space as Electron or a native app with a web view, um, that you could now go with Blazor and .NET MAUI together and you would have that Blazor hybrid approach. Or if you want to leverage the full power, full performance of all the devices, you could check into .NET MAUI, maybe WinUI, WinForms, WPF. Um, so we have all these options for you right now, depending on your requirements, what you like to develop with, and all that kind of stuff. Thank you so much for my session. I hope you enjoy the rest of the MAUI Fest. Um, and thank you so much, Javier, for having me.